Good evening, and welcome back. My name is Guthrie Thomas. I'm a guitarist and songwriter, among other things. And welcome to another discussion on Persona Studio One Pro version. Of course, this is my professional website. I always bring it up to show people out there that are not familiar with my work that I've been doing this for quite some time. 40-something albums, I think, now. 40 years and 40 girlfriends. If you want to check my stuff out, check it out on YouTube. Just type my name in the old search bar on YouTube and you might find something you like or dislike, but you will find something, as I always say. My family puts stuff up there all the time, so check it out if you're interested. All right, let's get to Studio One. As you can see, we got some tracks up here that have been recorded. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about just a few shortcuts and some little interesting things that uh, many people have asked me about and they just can't figure it out. And, and some of these things are kind of small and a little difficult to figure out and you don't really need them until you need them, of course. Now right here on the screen, my screen, is the white timeline, the cursor that moves across the tracks. I don't think you can see it. So just assume there's a white line here, as would be on your program. Now occasionally there comes a time when you're recording where you actually don't want to have to rewind or hit control B, which will take you back to the start or the heads or the beginning or the start of your song. And uh, if you hit control B as in boy, that will take you back to the start marker, which is the beginning of your song. Now, you can set a marker. Let's say there was only this little part uh, you wanted to fix right up here, let's say. And you wanted to fix something in here. So you'd want, you didn't want to have to go back and find it all the time. And the easiest way to do that is to set a marker right here in the 22nd bar or so. And you can do that by coming over here and you'll see it says marker right there and right next to marker there's a plus sign and a minus sign so my timeline is right here which you can't see but if I hit a plus sign right there a marker now appears as you can see now whenever I advance forward and by hitting play for instance well, the line just jumped up to here by the way I can hit control B and the time cursor will come back to this point. It's a very handy tool for uh, if you're doing some overdubs and you want to just keep tr doing it until you get it correct, uh, that's the handy tool to use. Set some markers that uh, when you hit Control B you can get back to it in a flash rather than uh, fooling around with going back to start and having to wait for that certain part to come up again. It's a common trick. It's uh, very, very useful uh, because everybody that does record knows uh, that mistakes are made and uh, sometimes you have to fix just one word in the track and I'd hate to have to have that word at the very end. Like in the old days with uh, tape, two-inch tape, we had to uh, roll the tape back. There was no little secret passage, so to speak. Now to get rid of this marker, you just click on it, it'll highlight, and then come over to the same area where it says marker, and right next to the plus sign is a minus sign. Just click on that, and your marker is now gone. So fool around with that. I'm sure you'll find some use for it. Uh, we do uh, every day. We use it in some fashion. All right. Let's say you have a mistake right here on this track. We're going to talk about a few shortcuts here. And... Uh, you wanted to get rid of that mistake. Let's say this entire recorded part right here was a mistake and I wanted to take it out and it really wasn't going to be a problem taking it out because it's a minor instrument and this track is so loud that uh, it wouldn't be actually noticed too dramatically unless somebody was really paying attention. Alright, the way you can do that is you can cut that part out right there. We're just going to cut that out. Now, a lot of people have trouble finding out how to cut these things, and it's actually pretty simple. You can right-click and use the split tool. There it is right there, and it's three, number three, on your keyboard. 
So I'm going to hit 3 on my keyboard, and now my little cursor turns into a Bowie knife. So I'll come down here on this track, and I'll cut it there, and I'll move it up here and cut it there. <laughs> now I'm going to hit the 1 on the keyboard, and my uh, Bowie knife will turn back to the cursor. Now here is the part we cut, and now I've highlighted it. Now you can delete that just by hitting delete, but that often will highlight other sections and you want to kind of be careful there not to hit delete again by accident or hit delete too fast. So I'm going to put that back and we'll cut it again. I'll hit three just as another example. The buoy knife comes up. Here's the bad part. I cut it there. I cut it there, and now I hit the 4 on the number pad, and uh, the old uh, Bowie knife turns into a school book eraser, and you just click on it, and it erases that part of the track. And then you could use your markers and just re-record something right in there if it's an instrument, and uh, fill it in. And uh, you can do that, or to leave it empty if your other instruments are predominantly loud, and you wouldn't notice it like one beat of a shaker, for instance. All right, and number five on your keyboard is the paint tool. I don't use that, so I can't really go into discussing it. And of course, number six on your keyboard is your mute tool. And you can come in here and mute any track, so that track is now muted. And uh, just that section. And this is not muted, as you can see, that it's still and no color change. Notice the colors change in here as to versus to here. And of course, if you want to undo that, you just hit Control Z. As with all programs and computers, it's sort of a universal fix it, so to speak. All right. I'm going to hit uh, Control 1 again. I mean, not Control, but just the number 1 on my keyboard. Now let's talk about uh, guitar for a second. I play a lot of guitars, electric and acoustic, uh, both 6-string and 12-strings, <clears throat> and the banjo occasionally, mandolin occasionally. But I'm going to pick this guitar track right here. It's an electric guitar. I'll click on that track, and of course it highlights to that sickly blue. And just so that I'll know that I'm working on it, I'm going to come down here and change the color. It's now uh, dirt brown. I'll change it to bright red, and here it is. Now, if I wanted to do some work on this track, and my guitar was out of tune, right above your uh, mute button and your solo button is an arrow right here. This applies to just this track. Each one of the tracks has the same configuration, so we're going to worry about the guitar today and I'm going to click on that arrow and that opens up the send and insert panels. So here's your sends right here and here's your insert panels. Now if you have uh, uh, something open you can just click on it and it will close it. Now we have reverb on this particular guitar and we also set up the guitar rig. But let us I'll get into that in a moment. Let's talk about tuning the guitar. Uh, I have a good friend that's been a musician for years. He's played on many of my albums, but he, he still doesn't uh, spend much time on tuning, and he's generally out of tune. But if you click on this plus sign right there, that will open up your effects for the guitars and just about everything else. you got groove delay, you got expanders, compressors, pro EQ down here flangers, all kinds of interesting things that you can do to a guitar. And down here, if you scroll down, it says tuner. Now this is a very handy strobe tuner. If you were tuned in regular tuning, it'd be E, A, D, G, B, E, of course. And uh, if I had a guitar, I, I would demonstrate how it works. But you just hit your low E string, and then you'll see the letter E right here, and it'll strobe back and forth. Of course, you'll see what I mean once you do it once. And once the strobe basically stops and comes to an equilibrium, uh, then your E will be right here, and it'll say either E plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 or E minus 1 minus 2 minus 3. Uh, minus 1 or plus 1, uh, most human ears can't differentiate the difference in 440. So... Uh, you're pretty close, in other words. In fact, you're real close. 
And you do the same thing through each string. Just hit each string and do the A. And you'll see an A and wait until your strobe settles down and centers in the middle. Uh, plus one or minus one is okay. And that's how you get an accurate tuning on your guitar, on a guitar track, if you think you're out of tune or having trouble tuning your guitar. Now, I've been playing 49 years now. I've always used a tuning fork. I don't use these. I've been tuning guitars for 100 years, so a tuning forks are very good for me. But uh, these electronic tuners are absolutely, impeccably perfect. So it's really just a matter of uh, getting used to using a tuner. I know when we're out with Willie Nelson, uh, the, they use one of these for tuning the piano, which makes perfect sense, but uh, I don't see too many uh, uh, old-time guitarists using these. But the new guitarist will always have a tuner right on stage that's electronic. All right, we'll close that out. I'm going to talk about uh, how you see the tuner has been uh, applied to this, this track. So if you right-click on it, you can remove the tuner just by right-clicking. You go to the bottom and it'll take it out. Now we've added the guitar rig to this guitar part. So if you click on it, uh, then the guitar rig comes up. And this is really fascinating stuff. This is really handy. Uh, we can take a regular standard, uh, regular guitar, a uh, Telecaster, one of mine, and come up here and pick a style. And over here it says country, and then I can turn the sound of my predominantly country song with uh, country twang clean, and then all of these amplifiers, effects, and different compressions and flanges will come up to indicate that sound. And there are literally hundreds of different combinations in here, from classic rock to blues to heavy metal. Uh, these are something you really want to fool around with, because each one of these sounds is different. Of course, classic rock is going to have plenty more than country, because country basically has one sound, the country sound. So you really want to maybe fool around with this. This is very handy. Also, I want to point out that this will work on any track on any instrument. So it doesn't have to be a guitar. You could fool around with getting an unusual sound for a mandolin, for instance, or a harmonica. And maybe you'll come up with some new unique sound that nobody's ever heard. I fool around with that quite a bit to get unusual sounds out of other instruments. All right. I guess that pretty much covers it, at least for today. Uh, of course, this is obviously for uh, beginners and some intermediates. Uh, the advanced can take care of themselves. So I hope this, hope this has helped out a little bit. Uh, it's just some of the shortcuts, a few tricks, that's all. A little bit about the guitar rig and the tuner. And until next time, have a great time. And if you're interested, check out my stuff on YouTube. Adios. Well, I once met a gal who was certainly searching for something. For a moment in time, her adventure led her to me. But I saw in her beauty and smile, she was feeling down. But Maggie got better that evening when we went to town. Then I thought to myself, oh man, you must be dreaming. Ain't a man in Topanga that wouldn't trade places with me. When we walked through the doors of the pool room, you couldn't hear a sound. Yes, now Maggie got better that evening when we went to town. If I'm dreaming, whatever you do, don't you dare wake me. It ain't very often I find myself lost on cloud nine. Hell of heavens like this, I'm leaving this very instant from the ground. Maggie got better that evening.
he went to town Have you ever dreamed a dream and awakened to find you're not dreaming? I mean, what in the world is this wonderful woman doing here? And our time together alone in the lost and found. Well, now, Maggie may be better when we went down. If I'm dreaming, whatever you do, don't you dare wake me. It ain't very often I find myself lost on cloud nine. Hell of heavens like this, I'm leaving this very instant from the ground. Maggie made me better when we went to town. Yes, I once met a gal who was certainly searching for something. And whatever that was may remain a mystery to me. Well, in just for a moment in time, we went all the way around. Yes, now, Maggie made it better when we went to town. If I'm dreaming, whatever you do, don't you dare wake me. It ain't very often I find myself lost on cloud nine. Hell, if heaven's like this, I'm leaving this very instant from the ground. Maggie made it better when we went to town. Yes, she did.